Vitamin C has long been promoted as a remedy for the common cold, and it is necessary for immune function. As an antioxidant, it helps clean up the mess when white blood cells are fighting infections. The instinct to pound vitamin C pills was popularized by the prestigious American chemist Linus Pauling. In 1970, Linus published a wildly popular book promoting mega doses of vitamin C to prevent colds. But where did he get this idea from? And should you be taking a daily vitamin C supplement? Let science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable. I'm Dr. Lara. Vitamin C supplements like Emergency are a growing $200 million industry. Sales peak during the cold and flu season. In fact, the majority of people who take vitamin C do it to boost their immune system. But what does vitamin C have to do with colds? Well, it has everything to do with Linus Pauling. Linus Pauling was considered the greatest chemist of his time. He was incredibly accomplished. The guy won two Nobel Prizes, and his work fundamentally changed the fields of chemistry, biology, and medicine. But his views on vitamin supplementation were initially sparked from personal experience. When Linus was 40, he was diagnosed with a rare kidney disease and was treated with a low-protein, low-salt, vitamin-supplemented diet. Having experienced the miracle of supplements firsthand, Linus focused the end of his career on megavitamin therapy to treat disease, coining the term orthomolecular medicine. Ortho implies correct in Greek to mean the right molecules in the right amounts. His 1970 book, Vitamin C and the Common Cold, went viral. Linus himself started taking 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day, and eventually increased to 18,000 milligrams. That's 18 grams, almost 200 times the recommended intake. But when a two-time Nobel laureate concludes that megadoses of vitamin C prevents colds, who wouldn't believe him? Was his book backed by evidence? Linus didn't actually perform the experiments himself. In his book, he analyzed four studies looking at vitamin C and the common cold. But there were a few flaws in his analysis. The main study that Linus used was a short trial in children who took 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day while at ski school in the Alps. This study found substantially reduced incidence of colds, meaning actually getting a cold, and shortened duration, meaning how long the cold lasts. Fewer, shorter colds, that sounds pretty good. And then he did some fancy statistical gymnastics. Linus made up a third variable where he combined incidence and duration. He called this mashup integrated morbidity. Sounds so sciencey, but what does it actually mean? Not much. You and I both know there's a really big difference between actually getting a cold and how long your cold lasts. The reality is that incidence and duration have really different patterns, so we can't just multiply them together. But Linus put a lot of emphasis on this mashed up integrated morbidity, which frankly just isn't a good metric. Another major flaw in his analysis is that he heavily relied on the ski children study to make sweeping conclusions for the whole population. But are you a young child skiing at high altitude? There may have been particular characteristics about these kids that made vitamin C supplements more effective. It's thought that they may have had low vitamin C status to begin with, so then extra vitamin C at any amount would benefit the immune system. Skiing in the cold Swiss winter at high altitude is also pretty intense physical stress, which can impact how vitamin C is used by the body. Overall, Linus was too optimistic about his conclusions on vitamin C and the common colds. His analysis was built on a faulty foundation of integrated morbidity, and used findings from a special population to make generalizations for the whole population. And yet, his conclusions were popular with the public and fueled the vitamin C industry we know today. His conclusions also fueled more scientists to study vitamin C and the common cold. A large meta-analysis, which combines many studies, forms a current day consensus. Regular vitamin C supplementation has no impact on the incidence of colds. So taking extra vitamin C can't prevent you from getting a cold. There is a statistically significant reduction in the duration of colds, but duration was only shortened by a tiny amount, 8% in adults and 14% in children. This means that if you had a cold for three days, prophylactic vitamin C pills might shorten the cold by less than six hours in adults and about 10 hours in children. Ask yourself, is it worth it to pay money and take a vitamin C pill every single day for a six hour shorter cold? The meta-analysis concluded that long-term vitamin C supplementation is not justified. The study did find that extra vitamin C reduced cold incidents during bouts of intense physical stress, like marathon runners, subarctic soldiers, and yes, 
ski school children. So there could be reason to take extra vitamin C as a prophylactic prior to extreme activity. More research is warranted. But this is still pretty different from the message that everyone needs to take vitamin C megadoses every day. Vitamin C is necessary for immune health. One of vitamin C's roles is to function as an antioxidant. Vitamin C's antioxidant power helps clean up the mess when white blood cells fight infections. This is why vitamin C deficiency is associated with impaired immunity. However, deficiency just isn't much of a problem anymore. It's so easy to get sufficient vitamin C from food. Women need 75 milligrams and men need 90 milligrams per day. One navel orange, or one cup of kale, or half a cup of red bell pepper each provide a day's worth. More isn't necessarily better. Now, you may be thinking, if the body uses vitamin C to fight infections, wouldn't you need more when you're sick? When it comes to the common cold, megadoses of vitamin C once you're already sick have not proven effective. But vitamin C therapy may be beneficial for patients with other severe infections. Currently, megadoses of intravenous vitamin C are being studied for cancer, sepsis, and COVID patients in the ICU. This is ongoing research, so we don't know if it's effective yet. It's also important to point out that these are very sick patients, so it doesn't mean that you should be taking extra vitamin C every day. These are doses you would get from doctors, not drugstores. Linus felt that an occasional mistake, even when published, was better than doing less challenging research. Due to his personal experience with supplementation, he may have been biased towards vitamin therapy as a panacea. Linus Pauling single-handedly exploded the vitamin C industry, but he was overly optimistic and, frankly, wrong. Luckily, there are no major harms from taking too much vitamin C. Common symptoms from megadosing are diarrhea, nausea, and stomach cramps. Since vitamin C is water-soluble, your kidneys excrete out whatever you don't need. Expensive urine. Vitamin C supplementation does not help fight the common cold in generally healthy people. But there may be some special populations who do benefit. The ski kids that Linus used to make his generalizations were quite possibly one of these special populations. This is very different from all people taking extra vitamin C every single day. Like Linus Pauling, I too am compelled by the power of nutrition on our health. Our difference is our focus. My nourishable perspective is that we can best support our health through a nutrient-dense dietary pattern built on a foundation of plants rather than isolated nutrients in pills. So don't waste your money on vitamin C supplements when you can easily get enough from foods. Vitamins, you know, they may be expensive, but at least there's no proof they work. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out all my references in the video description and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.